once again, you can kind of pick and choose how you approach this. If you want to approach this as a complex fraction, again, I would think of every single term in this, uh, in the complex fraction as a fraction itself. And then we can either use the LCD method or use the rewrite the numerator and denominator as individual fractions. So I'm going to do it the first method. If I look at my fractions in the numerator, my LCD, I have to have a factor of a 1, a factor of a 2, and a factor of a root x. So there's my LCD. If I combine these, I take the, frac or the uh, factor of my, or the numerator of my first fraction, and I multiply that by any LCD factor that's missing from that fraction's denominator. Right? It has the 1 is all it has, so it's missing both the 2 and the root x minus the next fraction's numerator times any LCD factors missing from its denominator. It's not missing anything. So if I continue to simplify this, root x times root x gives me x, so I get 2 times x minus 1, all over 2 root x. And I'm dividing that by this fraction in the denominator. Well, it's already written as a single fraction, so I can go ahead and invert and multiply. So when I multiply by this, I multiply by the reciprocal, so the 1 gets moved up to the numerator, the root x gets moved to the denominator. And when I simplify, I have 2x minus 1 in the numerator. 2 root x times root x just leaves me with a 2x in the denominator. Okay. So does it ask you for domain restriction on this? Okay. So here is the simplified form. Now, when it asks you to find the domain restrictions, and you have to go back all the way to the original form and, and look to see either here or here. You can see either one or actually here as well, but in looking at this form or this form, a couple things are apparent here. One, the x is inside of a radical, an even index radical. So you, you know that x can never be a negative value, right? So you have to restrict that. So in this particular case, you would have to identify that based on these two things, x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And now there's an additional restriction added because the root x is in the denominator of a fraction in both of these positions, and that is, can x actually equal zero in those cases? No. So from the radical standpoint, x has to be greater than or equal to zero, but the fact that it's in the denominator as well means that it has to be greater than zero. So your domain restriction is uh, all real numbers, x greater than zero.